Hello everyone. In this video, how do we evaluate this square root problem? We have the square root of 147 plus the square root of 27 all divided by the square root of 147 minus the square root of 27. To solve this problem, I'm going to approach it in two methods. And the first one will be to rationalize Usually, when you need to rationalize a sort, for instance, if you have a divided by the square root of b, to rationalize will mean to get rid of the radical at the denominator such that it becomes something of the form a root b over b. How do we move from this spot to this spot? we rationalize by actually multiplying the fraction by the conjugate of the denominator. In this case, we have a single expression at the denominator. So the conjugate is still itself, which is root b divided by root b. So if you multiply a times root b, you get a root b. And then if you multiply root b times root b, you get b. So that is how we rationalize the denominator of a sort. So in this case, we have two terms at the denominator of our given expression. So to rationalize the conjugate of the square root of 147 minus the square root of 27 is going to be the square root of 147 plus the square root of 27. So it is simply changing the sign in between the expression. So if it is minus like you have, it becomes positive. If it is positive, it becomes negative. So we are going to multiply all of this expression by this conjugate, the numerator and the denominator. So this is the numerator. We multiply all of that by all of this. And then we multiply this denominator, all of it, by all of this expression. So this becomes square root of 147 plus square root of 27 divided by square root of 147 minus square root of 27. So we say times, I'm going to keep all of this in brackets and the conjugate in this case, like we said, is square root of 147 plus the square root of 27 divided by the exact same thing, which is 147 plus the square root of 27. So we keep all of this in brackets so as not to make mistake. If you look at the numerator here, and then what we just multiplied it by, they are exactly the same thing. So that is like saying 147, the square root of 147 plus the square root of 27 squared, then divided by, now let us look at the denominator. It is exactly the same expression except for the signs. Here you have negative, here you have positive. So that is difference of two squares. And the expression for difference of two squares, for instance, if you have a squared minus b squared, this is expressed as a minus b times a plus b. So in this case, our a is root 147. So we s square that as it is here. Then minus the b is square root of 27. Then we square that. Given a plus b squared, this is expanded as a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. 
this is A, this is B. So we have square root of 147 squared plus 2 into A is root 147 and then B is root 27 then plus the square root of our b is 27 then squared so this gives us this square simply takes care of this square root and we have 147 here then plus 2 into you can put this two under the same square root and then say 147 times 27 or let me actually write times here and then say plus again this takes care of this and then we have 27 here adding this and this together gives us 174 then plus 2 roots I will still leave this as 147 times 27. So this is, now let's look at that radical. Then plus 2 into, the reason I've left 147 times 27 is so that we can see uh, that in 27 we have 9 times 3. And in 147 we have 49 times 3. These are two perfect squares, 9 and 49. So they can be taken outside of the bracket, or we simply say under that radical, we have 9 times 3 times 49 times 3. Okay, so this is square root of 9 times square root of 3 times square root of 49 then times square root of 3 this right here is 3 this right here root 3 times root 3 is 3 then this right here 49 is 7 so that this gives us 3 times 3 is 9 and 9 times 7 is 63 okay putting that back into this expression you have 63 here so this is 174 plus 126 and if you add that together this should give us 300 so our numerator what we have just solved for is the numerator let's call this numerator and then we cannot go to the denominator so if we've settled this we got 300 now this is difference of two squares and we already saw what to do with that earlier which is what we have here so let's quickly do that here so for the denominator, we have square root of 147 minus, this is squared, minus square root of 27 squared. So this square takes care of this square root, also happens here like that. And what we are left here is 147 minus 27 this subtraction gives us 120 so the numerator is 300 as you can see here and the denominator is 120 here so if we put numerator over denominator this is 300 divided by 120 let's divide 2 here is 6 and 2 here is 15 then 3 here is 5 and 3 here is 2 
giving us a final answer of 5 over 2, which is our final answer to this question. Now, this approach seems to be very long. Usually, it is because I'm explaining the steps involved. It shouldn't really be as lengthy as it is here, but for you to be able to see every step involved. So I'm going to use a simpler approach, which shouldn't take you uh, up to two minutes to solve. So let's rewrite the actual problem we've been trying to solve, which is square root of 147 plus square root of 27 divided by square root of 147 minus square root of 27. So what we are going to do in this approach is to look at individual term which are just these two and break them down. I'll start with square root of 147, which is, as we saw earlier, square root of 49 times 3. This same thing as square root of 49, then times square root of 3. This will give you 7 root 3. If we do the same for square root of 27, you get square root of 9 times 3 separated as square root of 9 times square root of 3 giving us 3 root 3 okay so back to the expression for the numerator it means we are now going to have 7 root 3 plus 3 root 3 then divided by 7 root 3 minus 3 root 3. So this is 10 root 3. Then divided by 4 root 3. And then we go ahead and divide. Root 3 cancels root 3 here. And then we can say 2 here is 2 and 2 here is 5 and just like we got earlier the final answer is still 5 over 2. So the second approach is way easier but that is if you know how to reduce large terms like this to basic terms like this. Large terms, this is not really large but it still needs breaking down to simpler terms. But at the end of the day we arrive at the same answer of 5 over 2. So whichever one comes to your memory in the exam, you can apply. Both should award you the same answer. It doesn't matter how long or how short, as long as you have done the right thing in the exam. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in my next video.